Hello and welcome. Today we'll be talking about the Yesu VX8DR. This radio was made a long time ago, back in the late 2000s, and was only a short run of its production. So there's very few models out there today in working order. This is a quad band radio, and it features 2 meters, 70 centimeters, 1.25 meters, and 6 meters. It has a good reception as well and it has a good capability of doing APRS and it's also submersible. Here on the table we can see a variety of different radios that we have starting from left to right for a size comparison only we have the Yaesu VX1R, Yaesu VX2R, Yaesu VX3R, Yaesu VX5R, the Yaesu VX7R, the VX8DR, the FT1D, and the Kenwood THF6A. Here on the table we have a bunch of accessories and the ATR and we have an estimated mean C connector which I installed on the ATR. We have the SBR15LI. This is an extended battery and you can get it aftermarket. It however does not fit in the charging bay because it's too thick unfortunately when you attach it to the radio. Next up we have the MH74 and this is a microphone and then we have the gps module that's an extra accessory that gets installed on top of it there's also an accessory that can put the gps module into the top of this we don't have it at the moment but you can do that as well with this particular unit the yesu 8dr is a quad band radio it does two meter 70 centimeter 1.25 meters and six meters for transceiving it has a wide band reception of 0 0.5 megahertz to 999 megahertz minus the cellular band. What's nice about this particular radio is that it also does automatic packet reporting system or APRS. What that is is there's a frequency that's a common calling frequency for transmissions and computer towers are set up for that frequency. And this can beacon out a digital signal via modem into the repeater tower and then if the repeater tower site is linked through an eye gate to the internet it will report your location via with the help of the gps module and the modem on this radio so that's aprs in a nutshell there's a lot more i could say about it and a lot more that it does but for now this unit is capable of that and more the other thing about this radio is that it is also water resistant for a certain amount of time you can submerge this unit in and if we take off the battery in the back you can see some of the gaskets i put an extra piece of adhesive down here to waterproof it extra on the bluetooth area here and you can see the gaskets here there's none on the battery however but since this seals up with the gasket there it should be okay to work just fine in the uh, water so that is the ATR's weatherproofing, waterproofing. It's also waterproofed and gasketed around the edges here as well and on the top too, as you can see. So on the side here, we have the PTT, the monitor, volume, and the function key. And then on the top here, we have the SMA adapter, the BNC adapter, and the antenna. We have the multi-pin mic port. And then here we have the rotary encoder knob, which can function as a menu scrolling item or a volume item. And then on the side, we have a unique function of the ATR, which you can only find on the 3R, VX3R. And that is a 3.5 millimeter stereo output jack, which makes this a convenient travel radio. Then we also have a DC input port, and then we have the back side here. Pretty straightforward. A pretty robust design. It's made out of a hardened plastic. It's got some rubber uh, protectors on the side here as well. So it's a very rugged radio, not as rugged as the VX7R or the 6R, but quite rugged in its own sense. So on the front here, we have both the A and B buttons for each different radio that's in here. There's two radios in this small radio. There's an A radio, which is marked up here, A, and, and that has a wider reception range than the B radio and a different sensitivity range than the B radio. So if we turn it on, We are on the A radio.
and as you can see it says a down here in the corner we're in memory road so memory recall mode is the repeater site here then we have a label alphanumeric label underneath you can put in a radio where i can label it and then what i usually like to do from a repeaters i like to put a pl tone that's sort of like a key tone to get into the repeater so i have it in front i know exactly what i'm looking at frequency and name and tone we have a dc voltage meter and then we have the time and then we have the tone indicator and then we have plus or minus on the tone then we have the power level down here and then we have the mode down here and the battery options now you can enlarge this or you can shrink it down too i prefer to have it enlarged as i can see more information on the screen or you can have both modes going at the same time so you can listen to two different frequencies at once with this radio which is quite nice for now we're going to leave it in monoband operations now what's nice about this radio is that it is a pretty rugged outdoor radio and it does APRS. So it is convenient to use when you're in the rain or outdoor camping or in the mud working. And what's nice about it is that it has a variety of different options to communicate with. Like I mentioned before with the APRS, you can send a beacon out. You can also send messages and I can show you that through the menu here. We have a station list for what you received and we have the message list which you can type in a message with this keypad here and send it to another APRS enabled device and you can text back and forth and in some cases I believe you can also email if I'm not mistaken or send it to a phone if it's enabled that way so it's quite a useful uh, radio in the digital sense it's a fully analog radio but it doesn't do the latest digital modes uh, that Yesu has for Fusion and C4FM. The FT1DR, which I'll get out here in a moment, for comparison, this does do Fusion and digital modes. And it also has a built-in GPS module, unlike the 8DR. In fact, the progress of technology, this came out just before this came out. And there was another in-between model from this to this it was called the 8gr it wasn't fully quad band but it was also very similar to the ft1d now the ft1d is sort of like the successor and this is the predecessor uh, of each other so it's quite interesting to see the technology this is not submersible but it's also water resistant going back to the 8dr there's a wideband reception on it as i mentioned before in the a radio which we're in and you can access that in several different ways we can try to get the weather report here i'm not sure if it's going to receive here we'll turn that down a little bit And then it also has a broadcast radio system. In a university somewhere. We're sick and tired of the world's greatest police force. So this is AM. And it also does FM as well. Now the FM is received in stereo. And that icon's down here.
we'll see. I, would, I can tell you, uh, you know, majority of the law enforcement men and women that I speak to. KC2 BNW portable testing. KC2 BNW portable all clear. So that's the broadcast reception demonstration on the 8DR. Quite a fantastic radio. And the menu system is very deep and varied in this radio. If we hold down the menu here, we'll get to the main menu. And it has over 100 plus different types of list for menu items. Going from LCD options to DTMF keypad. All sorts of different options here. And what I like about it is that for the antenna in the AM band, it has a bar antenna inside of it. And you can list it as receiving on the AM band, which is the bar antenna, or the bar and an external antenna, which is quite nice. We also have the antenna for the FM, which can use the external, or the earphone for the broadcast section, which is quite nice as well. So you have a lot of customizability, plus you have an antenna attenuator on here. So if you're in an area with a lot of RF noise, you can uh, attenuate that with this radio, which is quite nice since it is a wide band receiving radio. It's prone to a lot of intermod and other in interfering sources of RF. Now, what I like about it in this particular radio, you can program certain keys on here to do different functions. I This radio has a light in it, which is quite nice. It's a little dim light, but it's, in, it's good enough for seeing just right in front of you for your keys or your car keys or whatever. And to access that, I program this button on the bottom here to display the LED light here in the front, which is quite nice. It's a bit gimmicky on a radio, and most radios have a LED light on the top that's a little bit brighter than this. But I thought it was quite nice to have it built into a waterproof radio that you can use for an emergency. And speaking of emergencies, this radio will cover the police bands, auxiliary fire bands, auxiliary military channels, marine, shortwave, uh, basically, it's got a good uh, reception range across a variety of different uh, areas where you, where you can listen to emergency services, basically. So it's the perfect kind of emergency radio to have. Now, the only problems with this particular radio, and in my opinion, is that parts are not easy to come by for replacement. It's out of service. It's old as in it came out around 2007 and was only made until 2009. So what that means is it's very hard to find in working order. And the speaker itself, and it's a common complaint in most of these models, is that it doesn't get loud enough. And if we compare it to the FT-1D from before, volume level-wise, it's true. The FT-1D has the same type of speaker inside of it. It's a half-watt speaker, but it does drive it better in the FT-1D. And the FT-1D is much louder. It's a better listening radio than this. So this has a bit of a low volume problem. However, that can be still fixed or attenuated a little bit via the earphone port. So you can plug in a speaker externally to the radio. But it still kind of defeats the purpose of having a portable small radio. Now, some other notes about this radio is that you can get a lot of different battery packs for it. Uh, it does work with a three AA battery pack, although not uh, on, on high power. You can run nick metal hydrides in there, although they don't recommend that. They recommend alkalines because there's no uh, circuitry protection in it. But you can run nick metal hydrides in this if you wanted to. They make the bigger battery packs, as you've seen earlier, and the smaller, slimmer ones that this comes by default with.
Overall, the Yaesu VX8 there is an excellent quad band radio. I would recommend to somebody who's collecting these radios specifically, but I wouldn't recommend it to a beginner ham radio operator as it's got a lot of advanced features and functions that they may not like or find too cumbersome. Uh, there's much easier radios to use and to buy out there that cost a lot less expensive and in general can come with a lot of nice inbuilt features that this particular radio does not have necessarily inbuilt to it, with it, particularly the APRS inbuilt GPS module, which is sort of the progression of the technology of this radio. However, this is one of the most robust radios you can get that does quad band operations. So there's a balancing option to that and it's quite expensive. So that's all I have to say about the VX8TR. Thank you for watching and enjoy your day.